Hi, I'm John Pfeiffer, and I'm a student at the University of Sydney in the School of Computer Science. Today I'm going to talk about sub-trajectory proximity searches under the continuous Frisch distance. This is joint work with Joachim Goodmanson and Martin Sabold. In a nutshell, I study data structures and algorithms that support queries on movement data with a focus on trajectory proximity queries under various distance measures. In our setting, a trajectory is a polygonal curve through a contiguous sequence of vertices where each vertex pair is connected by a straight line segment. Here's an example trajectory P that has N vertices. Our recent work includes the data structure and algorithms for doing exact K nearest neighbor and range searches. In this work, the query is a trajectory with the goal of finding the closest trajectories in a large input set. It searches under the continuous Frisch distance, which informally can be thought of as the minimum leash length distance between a person and their dog as they each walk along their respective paths. This example shows a subset of input trajectories. The blue trajectory is the query and the green trajectory the nearest result. In this talk, I'm going to focus on new work. In this problem setting, the query is a trajectory and the goal is to find the closest sub-trajectory within a single large input trajectory P. Now to motivate this problem, one can think about various real world applications that capture trajectory data. For example, three point basketball shots on net, the flight path of bats, cement truck movement on a road network, and sign language classification using human body joint movement. Now a more formal def definition of the problem is as follows. We are given a large input trajectory P and a small query trajectory Q, and the goal is to find the subtrajectory P prime in P that is closest to Q. We use the continuous Frisch distance to measure the trajectory proximity and the sub-trajectory result is vertex aligned, meaning, meaning it must start and end on contiguous vertices of P. In our setting, there can be many exact closest sub-trajectory results, and so we report the one that cannot be shortened in length and still be the closest result. In the example, a single trajectory, uh, input trajectory P is shown in black and is size N. The query trajectory is in blue and is size M. And the closest subtrajectory P prime is in green. Now we're focused on practical implementable solutions. And so we have additional criteria. The solution must be able to give exact or approximate results, have no restrictions on the input trajectory P or query Q, be efficient even when P has many vertices, and work in higher dimensional space. The algorithms and data structure must use linear space and efficiently scale to trajectories with high complexity. Now I'll discuss our research results on subtrajectory nearest neighbor query algorithms and data structures. I'll talk about baseline algorithms first, which can be thought of as relatively simple modifications to known algorithms. Then I'll briefly discuss a couple of key algorithms in our new contribution. The baseline one algorithm is a straightforward modification of Alton Godot's classic algorithm that creates a, a free space diagram and searches white space using a dynamic program. They show that if you can construct a monotone path in the free space between trajectories P and Q, then they are at most a leash length distance apart. The monotone path must start at the bottom left corner and end in the top right corner. In our sub-trajectory setting, you can simply modify the algorithm to find a monotone path from anywhere on the left side to anywhere on the right side of the free space by computing column by column which parts in free space are monotonously reachable. However, one drawback of baseline one is the example here, where many reachable parts of P and Q may have to be searched. The baseline two algorithm is inspired by an approximate algorithm on the continuous Frisch distance. 
The main idea for this baseline algorithm is that we start with a large simplification error on P, call baseline 1 with a simplified trajectory P, and if an approximate result is not found within a specified error tolerance, then reduce the error and repeat. One drawback of baseline 2 is that if the distance between Q and the subtrajectory is close to zero, then this algorithm can do much more work than baseline 1. For the baseline 3 algorithm, we simply use an existing metric index data structure, which does nearest neighbor searches under the continuous Fréchet distance on a set of input trajectories. In this setting, we insert all pairwise subtrajectories in P into the metric index, and then simply do a nearest neighbor search on query Q. The index clustering can be very favorable, which results in fast queries. However, the data structure size is quadratic in our subtrajectory setting. Also, it can suffer in the case where many subtrajectories are a similar distance to the query Q, as in this example here. Now I'll give a couple of highlights on our best proposed query algorithm. The first idea greedily searches a free space diagram in contrast to Alton Godot's dynamic program. The greedy decider traverses the free space diagram on the fly, mostly along free space boundaries up and to the right, and attempts to construct a highest reachable monotone path, which we call a canonical path. If the traversal reaches a point where the direction switches from monotone to non-monotone, then it backtracks to a lower point and tries to continue constructing the monotone path from there. And here's a simple example. The algorithm starts in the bottom left corner, goes up, and follows the boundary between free and non-free space. It reaches a point where it can go straight up, but then it hits a boundary, and so the traversal changes to a non-monotone direction. It gets to a point where the path is monotone again and continues. And in this simple example, the pattern continues until it reaches the top right corner. In this example, the dark green path is the canonical path constructed by the algorithm. Algorithm analysis shows that our greedy decider uses linear space and runs in worst case quadratic time, the same as Alton Godot's algorithm. But experiments show that the greedy decider often runs in near linear time on both real and synthetic data sets. The second idea utilizes a new data structure called a hierarchical simplification tree, or HST for short. For intuition, the HST facilitates the query algorithm in pruning the search space and in constructing simplified subtrajectory candidates. The input trajectory P is pre-processed from coarser to finer simplifications using the Dremel et al. ball simplification method. The root has a large simplification error and a single interval that represents the entire trajectory P. And errors are halved from one tree level down to the next resulting in more and more intervals as you descend down the tree. Leaf nodes store unsimplified p-vertex intervals. A toy subtrajectory candidate search example is as follows. We have a single active subtrajectory candidate at level L plus 1 that starts in interval ij and ends in interval uv. At the next level down, we generate new candidates by computing all pairwise start and intervals. Some new candidates may be discarded by applying metric pruning and the triangle inequality. The HST has linear size and is constructed in O and D time, where D is close to log in on tested data sets. The HST size is small and construction time fast compared to other work that looks at the subtrajectory range counting problem, or compared to the baseline three algorithm. And our best search algorithm combines the greedy decider and HST ideas together, along with some other heuristics. Now here are some experiment results. They are run on a standard laptop computer using MATLAB. We evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of our algorithms on real and synthetic data sets, for varying sizes of input trajectories from 1,000 to 100,000 or more vertices. 
The first set of results shows our new HST data structure construction runtimes and uh, statistics. Our, our, our HST data structure is constructed five to six orders of magnitude faster than the metric index in baseline three. Baseline three cannot be constructed for the larger input trajectories due to the quadratic number of pairwise subtrajectories required. The tree depths are a small factor of log n and the maximum degree only increases if the underlying input trajectory has very high complexity. The second set of results shows nearest subtrajectory query results. The subtrajectory query runtimes for our best search algorithm, which is proposed three in this chart, overcomes baseline one algorithm issues I mentioned earlier and scales as input P grows in size. When the size of P is smaller, our query algorithm is closer to baseline three runtimes. And with one of the data sets, it's actually faster. And when P is larger, our query algorithm is one to four orders of magnitude faster than others. Also, the subtrajectory candidates that are created during the query are smaller in size, which helps speed up the algorithm. Now, there are many open problems, one of which is the inverse subtrajectory query problem. In this setting, the query is a large trajectory, and the goal is to search for smaller trajectories in an input set that closely cover the query. In this example, the first part of query Q is close to input trajectory PI, the middle part is close to PJ, and the end part is close to input trajectory PK. Thank you for your attention, and just a reminder that a bread first search is done in constant time. Thank you.